<laughs> oh, sweet, so fun. Okay. We'll have you right here. <laughs> All right, so everybody's here, so we are going to do a role play of a MANIP 1 final exam. So how much, how many hours have you guys had so far in MANIP? A lot? I don't think it's been a lot, actually. It's like yeah, it's not quite been, yeah, it's not quite been 36, something like that, okay. Uh, I just want you guys to be aware of how far advanced you are compared to other programs going through like this, okay. For you guys to be able to do the setups and adjustments you are doing already in the assessments, it's well advanced to what other programs are doing. So first of all, just a hats off to you guys for working so hard, and in fact, this class in particular has been, one of, has been the most advanced class that we've taught already, actually, so. Okay? All right, so what I'm going to do is I am going to role play. So let's be 100% clear on that. I am pretending like I'm a student, so I may be a little bit nervous. I might give some wrong answers, things like that. There's no such thing as a perfect exam when you're going through this. Just give the best that you can do as you proceed. Uh, Dr. Tassoni is going to be the invigilator for this, and we have our model here, Miss Fiona. All right? Yeah, everybody's giving the whistle. Yeah, look at that. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to do is this will be a final exam, uh, final exam scenario for just the practical. Yeah. Okay. What I might even do if I was sitting in the audience is I might make little notes about things that you want to ask about or things that you want clarification on as you go through. So, all right. Okay. So we're just the practical portion of the NIP one final exam. We're just going to start out. Can you give me five relative contraindications to NIP? Uh, five relative contraindications. Um, let's see. Maybe they have some instability somewhere. Um, maybe more specific? Like uh, instability, maybe they've had a previous sprain or a strain or something like that. Could be a relative of maybe the neck or the low back or something like that. Maybe they have, oh, this is a tough question. So maybe they have some kind of vascular disorder, such as you know, ring or something like that. Could be a relative? Um, yeah, I'm trying to try to try to try to Something osteo would be a osteo fracture. fracture. Yeah, would be a fracture, sorry. Good. Uh, okay, so moving on to a, to a uh, assessment portion. Can you palpate for me the spinous process of T4? Spinous process of T4. All right, what I'll do is I'll have my patient turn around, actually, if that's all right. And I just want to make sure that you can see. Okay, so for T4, there's a couple of ways I could find this. I could go ahead and landmark C7, T1 and have the person bend their head forward and then bring her head all the way back up. And I can say this is T T1, T2, T3, T4 is right about there. Would be one way that I could get there. I could also palpate down the spine of her scapula right here. <laughs> okay, and get to T4 that way as well. Okay. Can you take your patient through... Active range of motion of the lumbar spine. Active range of motion, lumbar spine. All right, patient, if I can have you stand up facing me. All right. I'd like you to follow the actions that I do. If anything is painful or uncomfortable, please let me know right away, and don't do anything you feel will cause you further injury. Okay? So have you bend forward all the way and touch your toes, and I'm looking for things like motion, maybe rib height differences or anything like that, and she comes back up, and I'll have you go ahead and lean to the side this way. All right, and lean to the opposite side. Any pain or discomfort with that? No? Okay, let's have you just take a step forward, and I'm going to have you lean all the way back if you can. She leans back. Any pain with that? Back forward. Okay, and I'll just have you turn to the side, and I'll have you turn to the other side. Key thing here is to watch that the hips don't rotate too much and that it is isolated to the lumbar spine. Can you perform a VBI test on it? Okay, VBI <laughs> test. Or when it would be indicated. Okay, a VBI test would be indicated before any cervical manipulation is done. Um, and just for the purpose of this, I just know that this headpiece doesn't go down far enough, so I'd actually put the patient's head at the end of the op uh, head at the opposite end of the table. So I'm going to have you lay down on the back of the table here, with your back on the table. Sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. My words get mixed up. Uh, I'm going to have you slide forward even a little bit more. Up, up, up. And I want to make sure that her shoulders are at the edge of the table, so even a little bit higher than this. And I might go through in gradual stages. If I have a high index of suspicion that this person does have some kind of vertebral basilar issue, I might just start with laterally flexing them to the side and see how they tolerate that. And maybe rotating them to the side and see how they tolerate that. And then I could take her all the way back to here. And I'm just going to ask you to look at a certain point on the ceiling up at the top. And any lightheadedness at all? No. Any pain or discomfort? No. No. Who's the Prime Minister of Canada? Mm. Who's the president? Who's the president? Who's the president of the US? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. And if I wanted to, I could actually have her follow my fingertips as part of an H pattern. So follow my fingertip. Looking for any nystagmus, any dizziness, anything like that. 
Boop. <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll get her back up. Okay. So we move on to the manipulation portion of the exam. Okay. <coughs> so starting with the uh, SI joint, can you perform for me a, <coughs> excuse me, an adjustment for a right PI ilium? A right PI ilium. Okay, so what I'll have you do, patient, can I have you lay down on this side facing me? Okay. Okay. Uh, can you either talk through hand contact? and the direction of force. Okay, so hand contacts, direction of force. So the first thing is, if this is going to be an isolated PI ilium adjustment, I'll have you just slide back just a little bit like this, bring this leg up. I really don't want the hip to flex past approximately 90 degrees because I'm gonna be trying to move the ilium back in this direction. My hand contact is going to be a hypothenar over the PSIS. Upper body, I'm going to just stabilize like this. A key thing here to make sure it's different, that it is actually an SI adjustment and not a lumbar adjustment, is I let the upper body roll over as we do it, okay? So I've, oh, sorry. Yep, just take the patient to end range. Okay, so first thing I'll do is landmark the PSIS. I can just roll over here and I feel a little bump of the PSIS. Mm -hmm. Take my hand, get into position. And so I'm gonna just, tissue pull is gonna be medial to lateral and I to S, so I really hook into the PSIS with my hypothenar eminence and I'm going to kind of get to, I'm going to guess, sorry, that is the end range right there. Okay? Good. All right. Do you want me to do a drop? Are you comfortable with me in drop I suppose so. Okay. I'll do a light <laughs> drop. We'll do a light drop here. Okay? All right. So she's going to take a big breath in as she breathes out, 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 and then drop in. Okay? Good. All right. Okay. Can you demonstrate for me a uh, T5 left costal subluxation? So the adjustment that you do to correct that. Okay, a T5 left costal subluxation. Okay, so like a rib five is out on the left hand side. Okay, do, should I do it supine or prone or does it matter? Supine. Do it supine. Okay, so I'll have the patient just laying on their back like this. I might have her slide down the table just a little bit, and the headpiece is a little bit high for this setup, so I might just... Sorry. Okay, all right, if you can, can you give yourself a hug like that? All right, and we'll bring this leg up just so it's easier to rotate, and you said it was on the right? Left. Left, okay, it was on the left, yep. So this is, this is her left. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I'm going to use a thenar, a thenar contact right there, and that's going to hook into the rib itself. Okay. That'll hook into the rib, and I'm going to tissue pull down and lateral. You won't be able to see that. The patient will be able to feel that. Um, okay. And then landmarking the rib. So we can start. First ribs are more difficult to palpate. So there's actually on this patient, it's pretty easy. First rib, second rib. You said fifth? Yes. Third. And that's going to be fifth right there. So I mark it, slide my hand under, tissue pull down and out. I get my body nice and low, and I'm going to roll across, and her end range is going to be right about there. Okay? If I was going to do this real time for an adjustment, which is a bit uh, advanced for me right now, but I've been spending a lot of time in class, so I feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Is it okay if I do it really mm -hmm. quick, just once? Okay. So big breath in. And as she breathes out, 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 and then push through. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can you demonstrate for me an index pillar push? An index pillar push? For a C2, C3 right rotation restriction. C2, C3 right rotation restriction. Index pillar push for a C2, C3 right rotation restriction. Okay, what I would do is the VBI test has already been done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stabilize the occipital bone like this, kind of almost shaking hands with the ear. Turn her head roughly to maybe 30 degrees off like this. This other hand is going to make a tissue pull around to the articular pillars that are going to contact somewhere right about here. And I'm going to get nice and low. And the key thing here is that my whole body moves as I rotate. So I kind of rotate around. There's her end range and I would adjust. Interestingly enough, we could adjust right there. Okay. Patient, should we? Could we? Go for it. Yeah? Okay. All right. So tissue pull to end range. A little push. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So questions on that? That would basically be it. How long did that take us? That took us probably not more than so it's seven minutes, eight minutes, something like that. 
If you fumble through answers, just keep it going. If you fumble through answers, it's going to take you longer to get through it, okay? If you're not sure on something, just say, I don't, I'm just going to skip over that and keep moving, all right? If you forget some of the contraindications, skip it and just keep on moving, okay? The big marks here are for the actual demonstration of skill. Okay, go ahead. Yep. Yeah, VBI. Yeah, so you could take a mark off there, maybe half a mark. So in fact, we should ask that, uh, Mike, what is your feedback on the grading of that for everybody? What did you... I didn't actually write down the grading. I mean, thing, things were uh, good overall. Um, I wouldn't take any marks off of that if I have to prompt you. When you actually look at the form itself, there is a section for uh, the relative and absolute contraindication. So we're looking for basically one from a miscellaneous section, one from the arthro, one from osteo, one from neuro, and one from vascular. We're looking for one from each section. Um, I'm not going to deduct marks if I have to prompt you for one section or the other. So if you start listing a couple that are under the same heading, but you haven't listed anything for vascular, I'll just flat out ask you for something vascular if you haven't listed it yet. Uh, no marks off for that. Um, <clears throat> I mean, the, the assessment's good. I mean, as long as you can palpate what we're asking you to palpate. Range of motion, it's, it, being able to take, you should be able to do range of motion at any region of the body at this point. Um, and then orthopedic tests, as long as you, you always want to talk about not only why you're doing it, but just how you would do it. And just taking the, um, taking feeling it through the VBI, he was talking about like the positions he would take her into and why he was doing that and, and what he was looking for. So what a positive sign would be. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, for the MNIP section itself, we're looking for an explanation, hand contact, uh, Patient, the, the doctor's confidence on the setup itself, um, and then being able to take the patient to end range, making sure the tissue pulls good, um, and then of course the full explanation of what you're doing. Yeah, line, of, yep. line, line of, drive. of drive. Yeah, line of drive and vector force has to be there. Yep. Yes, remember for the, yeah, 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 so that would be one, yeah, go ahead, Mike, sorry. No, but that, yeah, exactly, so I mean, you'd always want to talk about, we're still looking for intro statement when you're doing range of motion, um, you know, asking the patient if you can do a hands-on assessment, um, and then, of course, if you are doing the orthopedic test, making sure that you verbalize that you do that bilateral and second side first. Okay, other good questions? Did it look, did it look that bad? Does it look that scary? No. Okay. It seems pretty generalized to minute, but we're going to go through like ortho exams, for example, like like just general like no the purpose and stuff. the purpose of this class is manipulation is the purpose of this class okay it's kind of expected that you guys keep up on those skills and they may make an appearance on the final exam i don't know <laughs> on the on the final as far should we ask them about a pin and stretch on a segment no we just don't have time we don't have time for that for this the whole purpose of these classes is they are manipulation classes all this other stuff is kind of extra bonus stuff we're putting out there on top of it the main function is manipulation demonstration of skill and the, spe the special tests that you're going to be asked for or limited to the axial skeleton? Yeah. So are we going to have them do a talus adjustment because that's the only one you showed them? No, 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 no. This is spinal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We did it. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I know we did it. Yeah, yeah. I know. They, they know we did it too. Okay. Any other good questions? Not necessarily a good question. You just picked active range of motion to ask him, but you could be passive or... Yeah, so the range of motion could have been active, passive, resisted. Any of that stuff is fair game. And he could have also taken me a little bit further if he wanted to. It's the proctor's option. You could have said, what are you stretching in this position? What are you compressing? Those are fair game questions. Because you're not just passively, as much as you're just going through the motions in clinic or whatever, wherever else you're doing this, you're just passively going through it. Think about what you're doing. This patient comes over here in real practice and they have pain with this. Well, now I have to think about what could cause the pain. Right? What are my pain generators? What am I trying to isolate the tissue for my therapeutic interventions?